So a designer virus is basically, um, you take an existing virus and you can remove parts of that virus and replace it with genes of interest. A virus isn't alive, people. It's non-metabolizing. And look at it. I mean, either it's single-stranded or double-stranded RNA or DNA. And it just happens to have the perfect vector for infection, a protein capsid that just bonds to the cell receptor and then it penetrates and injects its genetic material. And it's like a program because a virus can't hurt you by itself. It can't reproduce by itself. It's not alive. Your enzymes have to read it and create what it tells you to create. If they don't do that, it can't hurt you. It's nanotechnology. See, a microbiology student would be like, well, uh, our professor says that viruses come from the rainforest often because it has a similar temperature to human's body temperature. Yeah, okay. Come on, people, it's technology, all right? There's no reason for a virus to exist in nature. Think about it. We got the blood work back. You were right. It is Marshall Bowman. Anything else? Yeah, Walter seems to think that he was dosed with some kind of designer virus. So it was intentional? Hard to say it was an accident. This stuff doesn't exist in nature. How, what are the odds of that? That you, <laughs> you'd have the correct codons to be a viable fragment of, of DNA or RNA and a delivery vector, protein capsid around it? Come on. And look at HIV with AIDS. You get you, in in your immune system for your white blood cells. Anyway, you have a system. You have different types of white blood cells. And most of you don't care about this, but in case there's those physiology students out there that need to hear the technical stuff, because I won't be qualified to you unless I know what you know. Uh, yes, I know what those are: the eosinophils, basophils, neutrophils. Okay, and then you've got your monomorphs, and those are the T and Bs, and the monocytes, which you call a macrophage when it's in the body because it's mobile. The macrophage is kind of like the cop. All right, it's always going around your body sampling stuff, looking for anything that it would consider to be an antigen or something that it sees as foreign to the body. So if it finds something like a bacteria that's foreign, that's infective, it will engulf it. That's why they call it a phagocytical cell, P-H-A-G-O. Phag means to engulf, to eat. Cyte means well, cell. So it's a phagocyte. So it will engulf it and then display its material, the contents of the bacteria, on its cell wall. Then it takes a little trip into, the, say, a lymph node. There you have many white blood cells already there. In fact, you're born with, I guess, up to like 500,000 different types of combinations already there to handle infections. Like you're already pre-programmed to fight off up to 500,000 different potential infecting agents, right? But it's very generic, so if something new comes into your body, what happens is this macrophage will go in there and say, Hey, you know, look what I got. Of course, no, it's not speaking English, all right, I'm just being metaphorical. It goes in there and says, look, look, anybody here know what this is? Anybody, can you handle it? So eventually maybe this macrophage encounters a white blood cell that says, hey, wait, I, I kind of have something that can deal with that. That's pretty similar to how I'm made. Here, just give me a moment. Let me change a few things up. They call this genetic recombination. So it changes its genetic sequencing a little bit so that it can effectively go after the infection. Once it's done and once it's, it's changed itself to be correct and so that it can handle it, it divides and puts clones of itself dormant. They call those memory cells and that's your immunity in case that pathogen comes back to the body again so you don't have to go through this whole process. But when it's identified and says, okay, I'm the one to take care of it, then it will turn on a receptor on its cell wall and all the other ones will turn their receptors off and this is a receptor to a substance called interleukin-2 inter means between leukin means white white blood cell it's a hormone secreted by your helper cells and what this hormone does is it causes rapid cell division they divide fast i mean your lymph nodes will literally become packed wall to wall with white blood cells. This is why a doctor will feel your lymph nodes, right? If they're swollen, that means that your immune system is trying to fight something off. HIV 
goes after the helper cells, the one that secretes interleukin-2. So without that, you don't get the rapid cell division. Yeah, I'm sure that just happened to show up in the rainforest somewhere as a freak of nature. <laughs> no, man. Viruses are nanotechnology. Viruses add genetic sequences. That's what many of your infections that you pass off as a cold here or the flu there, they're actually changing your DNA. I will say this, our friend here didn't start out this way. In order for a cell to be changed so profoundly, Basically, the DNA is going to have to be mutated. It's like the genetic code of that cell is going to have to be reprogrammed. And certainly there are things out there that can have you know, those sort of effects on your cells. Um, environmental factors such as radiation, cigarette smoke, and even um, the genetic parasites that we call viruses. A virus, well, at the simplest level, it's basically a piece of genetic information, either DNA or it could be the system molecule RNA, if he was going to be infected with a virus, one of the viruses that can affect the most profound changes in our cells is a type of virus called a retrovirus. And what's special about a retrovirus is that unlike most types of viruses, it can actually make itself part of our genetic material. Yes. But how do you resist the virus? What's a carrier? You hear about carriers. Well, this person's a carrier. They're not suffering from the symptoms, but they're a carrier. Well, if you're a carrier, that means that your white blood cells obviously didn't consume the virus. They didn't eradicate the body of the virus. Otherwise, what do you carry? Generally, because the virus is just too small. It's too small or intracellular or something. But why aren't you manifesting symptoms of it? If one person gets the wart virus and expresses warts once and then does not express warts again, and another person gets it and keeps expressing them, what's the difference? Well, the one that doesn't express it figured it out. Hey, this is doing all this stuff. Don't read that, basically. And then transmits that information throughout the entire body. Everybody, listen up. This genetic sequence, don't read it. It does this, 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 and this. Ignore it and see the thing about a virus if you don't read it, if you don't follow its instructions, it can't hurt you. There's a couple different well-known retroviruses. Um, probably the best known is HIV. There's also other types in that class, um, which are feline and murine leukemia viruses. And a lot of the viruses that are responsible for causing cancer are also retroviruses. So it looks here that the genes that the virus carried are starting to be expressed in Bowman. The fact that he's bleeding from his nose is quite interesting because a lot of viruses that have a very um, rapid course of infection through your body, things like the hemorrhagic fever viruses, one of the things they do is they basically dysregulate your body. Your body knows it's been infected with a virus. All sorts of things, all sorts of alarm bells are going off. And one of the um, consequences of that is that you basically lose the ability to maintain your blood and your body fluids in the normal compartments. So you'll see bleeding from your nose and from your eyes. And that's one of the characteristics of um, viral diseases such as Ebola. There is a patent for Ebola and you're looking at it right here. And in fact, it's not the only one. You can also view others here where it says four more. These are also other, you know, patents on Ebola. Here's another one. And let's check out some more and another and another. All right. These patents actually do exist. They are there. They have been created. They exist. Okay. That in mind, let's move on. And then there is this U.S. Bioweapons Lab in Sierra Leone at the epicenter of the Ebola outbreak. Yes. Yes, yes, do you see this? Right where Ebola is breaking out is a United States bioweapon lab, CDC lab. And guess who owns this bad boy? And I mean, this isn't a coincidence, folks. There's a reason this stuff is happening. But U.S. bioweapon lab that's in Sierra Leone with links to, you guessed it, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation at the core 
of the Ebola epidemic. And now here we are at the Vial Hemorrhagic Fever Consortium. And there's the link. I'm going to leave a link. Ken Kenham Government Hospital. Lovely. Uh, the Kenema Government Hospital, or KGH, is located 300 kilometers east of Freetown in Kenema, Eastern Providence, Sierra Leone, and had the highest incidence of Lasse fever in the world. This region is is endemic to an array of tropical diseases, including malaria, yellow fever, TB, intestinal parasites, as well as Lasse fever, and now Ebola. <coughs> In other words, they have a place that they're studying with the CDC. Here's your CDC, a bioweapons lab. Now, let's check out some of these doctors that are with this organization. All right, here's our first one. Mr. Robinson, let's check you out, buddy. First they create it, and now they're going to let it loose. All right, so here's a little information on him. New Orleans, hmm, okay. Bio, um, James E. Robinson, MD, serves as a principal investigator on the research project, investigating the roles of protective and pathogenic B cells in human Lasse fever. His is a collaborating investigator in four large consortia projects funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Why do they always have their names in things like vaccines and uh, things like Ebola? How come they keep showing up? Let's go on. All right, let's go to this woman, Harvard. Yes, go girl, Harvard. Paradise's awards and fellowships include the Rhodes Scholarship, the Soros Fellowship. Uh, fellowship. That's the Soros Foundation, okay? So he's funding, he's funding her. I don't care if it's funding or what it is. These people have links. And anybody linked to him or linked to Bill and Melinda Gates is just not good. Now, this guy is also pretty cool. Wow, well, he is uh, Stephen Geyer. He's not particularly linked to Bill and Melinda Gates or Soros, but he is linked to a lot here in America. Let me straighten out his bio. All right, here it is. Stephen spent time at the CDC and prevention researching, you guessed it, vector-borne infectious disease, airborne disease, whatever. He studied them. He then moved to complete a master's of public health at Columbia University in a three-year fellowship with the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Disease. He has studied things such as Nile, West Nile, the Dungan fever, monkeypox, and Ebola. This man has links with the CDC and links with the U.S. Army. All right, then there's this. We, we know a while back that Mr. Gates donated lots and lots of money to combat the Ebola crisis. He paid $50 million to fight the viral outbreak in West Africa because he cares. Bull crap. Man don't care. He don't care at all. He specifically said that they created vaccines, okay, to depopulate. Let me play. Let's, let's take a look. Uh, first, we've got population. Now, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, healthcare, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15%. There you go. Full-fledged admission that if they do a good job on vaccines, they can lower population. Now let's read this. I have previously reported that Monsanto has partnered with the Department of Defense to use a proxy third-party company to develop a vaccine against Ebola. The seed money began at one and a half million. The value of the deal could grow to 86 million. The company's name is Tecmira Pharmaceutical Corporation, a leading developer of RNA therapeutics. TKM-Ebola, 
on anti-Ebola virus, RNAi therapeutic is being developed under a $140 million contract with the U.S. Department of Defense's Medical Countermeasure System Biodefense Therapeutic Joint Protection Management Office. As breaking and shocking of a news story as this has potential to be, the real story is that this is not the most important part of the Ebola threat which has invaded the U.S. The truth of the matter is that these unholy and untrustworthy associations when it comes to fighting the Ebola virus virus represent the mere tip of the iceberg. Some government-sponsored institutions, as well as some of the global elite, have positioned themselves to profit, because remember, it's about the money. And they're going to profit from, from this enormously from the spread of the virus and the development of and dissemination of mandatory Ebola vaccinations and the imposition of total martial law in the process. A summary of the invention section of the patent document, okay, you can go back, I'll leave a link to it, also clearly claims that the government is claiming ownership over all Ebola viruses that share as little as 70% similarity with the Ebola it invented. Why would a government organization claim to have invented this disease and then claim a monopoly over its exploitation? for commercial use? Good question. In other words, it is clear that the CDC plans to claim royalties on an Ebola vaccine. Do you get it? Gates has announced that he plans to vaccinate every child in the third world with multiple vaccines. Do you realize the enormous profits that can be realized by vaccinating every child in the third world? If we apply Gates penchant for investing in causes which produce a hefty return on investment, then one could reasonably suspect that Gates is positioning himself to profit on the 50 million he has invested in the Ebola cause, which conveniently includes the CDC, the holder of the patent for Ebola. It's about the money. They want the money. They're going to get the money. Second, it's about depopulation. Let me prove it to you. Um, I, I came across this right here. Now this is on newsweekly.com, but back in 2006, scientists calls for the death of humanity. And he gets a standing ovation for this thing, for making a statement. A Texan scientist advocates killing nine tenths of the world population by an airborne Ebola virus. Why would a scientist stand up and specifically say Ebola, okay? And this is eight, eight or so years ago, okay? Back in 06. And now we're having a pandemic of Ebola. What? What? You, what is this? an award-winning Texas scientist was giving a stand-in ovation after he advocated the extermination of 90% of the Earth's population by an airborne Ebola virus. Hey, if those idiots are standing to, to kill 90% of the, the friggin' world, kill yourself. Get rid of yourself for crying out loud. If you think you're a cancer on there, kill yourself. Be my guest. You're going to stand for this guy? Heck no. I would have thrown tomatoes at, the, tomatoes at the guy and probably like ran him over with a, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't murder the guy, but heck, I'd feel... Like, you know, here, I'd give him a knife to murder himself. You, why don't you start us off, little Mr. Scientist? Okay, because you ain't nobody special. But apparently, he thinks he is. And here we are in the brunt eight years later with an Ebola pandemic on our hands. And here's one more news report. So, you know, it's not just one. LifeSiteNews.com back in 06, April of 06, FBI interested in Texas doomsday ecologist who said Ebola the solution to human overpopulation. Oh, it's people like this that tick me off. There are lots of labs out there that are actually able to make viruses. Why would people do that? Right now, I've got two other major viruses spreading like crazy. And that is Ebola, that's threatening, the, threatening West Africa and potentially could threaten the globe, and ISIS that is destroying Iraq and Syria and is potentially threatening the globe. And I call them both viruses because what they are. And as those two, the, the, it's like the red horseman of war is galloping. The white horseman of conquering is galloping. The, uh, the black horseman of the economy and the stability of, of society seems to be in the in the gates 
And now we're talking about this black horseman, uh, this horseman of uh, this pale horse that's galloping with death, with disease, and and these storms that could bring about even worse diseases from the radiation from Fukushima. So we're watching an absolute apocalyptic time period we're in right now. Very, very, very volatile, the world. Well, the Bible calls it the beginning of sorrows in Matthew 24, verse 8. As Jesus said, there would be uh, false Christ and false prophets shall rise and they shall deceive many. And see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. For there shall be wars and rumors of wars and nations rising against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms and famines and pestilence and diseases and plagues and earthquakes and divers places. All of these, of course, would be the beginning of sorrow. And I think we can see that's the time we're in. So if you're not saved, really take a look at what's going on and take a look at what the Bible tells you would happen in the last days. Certainly. It's a time for people to give their lives to Jesus Christ. We're running out of time. Then again, you don't know how much time you have anyway. The Bible says we have no promise of tomorrow. None of us. So we need to be saved before death finds us. And to be saved means to call upon Jesus Christ. Believe on him as the Son of God. And ask him to come into your lives. He'll do more than just rescue you from the perils of damnation. He'll put in you the joy. It's a joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's the greatest thing that could ever happen to you in your life. God bless. Your nose is bleeding. Can we have a box of tissues, please? No. No tissues won't help. Get me some sedatives. No.